Hello, community. Today we can have some fun with the topic. Hey, what happens when AI fails? What happens? And no, I'm not talking here about here this from CNBC that tells hey McDonald's here now to end the AI drive-through test with IBM, where IBM tried for two years to solve a simple task that you can order at a McDonald's drive-through, and the AI would take care of your order. Not talking about this, I'm talking here about my video. And you responded as a community really massively to this video. And you remember it was this test how to send your seventh child to Stanford. And it was kind of a little bit of a mathematical conundrum. Your response showed me that I have to give you an explanation and be more precise about the intention. So let's start. What was it? It was that I gave you a prompt about how to send your seventh child to Stanford. And I ask here multiple LLMs or vision language more like GPT for Omni or Cloud 3 Sonnet, Gemini Pro, and other NVIDIA systems, huge systems, to simple answer here four lines of text. And you know, they all failed. Now you remember that those LLMs have been pre-trained on particular data sets. And if we talk about causal reasoning, you think that in those data sets, you have pre-trained examples on which the system learned how to argue, how to do causal reasoning. So maybe here in GPT-4 Omni, you add pattern 1 to pattern 111. And this was the pre-trained data set for the system to learn causal reasoning and so on for all the other models. Now, I designed this prompt here in a particular way, and I will show you. And at first run, it completely fails on all the models. But, of course, I got some comments saying, hey, in your video, you know, the issue is that the words you used. This caused some confusion. If you replace the word received, for example, you get a better response. And yes, you're absolutely right. But you know, the human language is complex. We as humans are not perfect causal reasoning machines. We talk in a very specific way as humans. And what I did not want to do to change my human language and make it simpler and adapt it to a machine readable way and talk as a human so that the machine is able to understand me. I don't want this. A machine has to be able to understand a human communication. And then I received a great response here. And you were saying, hey, you just show us that all the LLMs fail. And you see, see, the model failed. But you didn't provide much context or clarify why it happened and what we can learn from this. And here I understood, yes, you are absolutely right. I did not provide the context and I did not clarify what this is all about. And when I ask you, hey, can you find an LLM? Can you find a way to make this work? I thought more of an exercise than giving you here the complete way forward to explain everything. So I have to do this now. So let me start again. We have a prompt. We have our different LLMs, the most powerful LLMs or vision language model on this planet, and they fail on a prompt of four lines of text. Now, you know, then straightforward path would be, hey, I just add here a little bit of help to the system. Because if the inherent knowledge, the parametric knowledge of GPT-4 Omni does not include my particular prompt example, it is not in the pattern that the system has been pre-trained on, then the system cannot solve this. So what I do, I provide exactly the reasoning pathway to solve here the query or my prompt. Simple idea. And one subscriber managed to come up with the correct solution. But you know this reasoning pathway, the simplest form, you use it every day. You say, hey, LLM, think step by step, or hey, I don't know, GPT, do a role play. Now you are acting as a logical genius or as a particular expert in your field. 
And some models have only been pre-trained here on those roles. For example, they have specific dominant patterns in their pre-training dataset that enables them to solve here specific tasks, which is great. But yes, I choose here the prompt that it does not fit here into this classical roleplay system. You might say, hey, I give it another reasoning pathway. Break it down in simpler, less complex set of queries. And then we go through each simpler query step by step. And then when we add up everything, we come to a conclusion. I have even seen system implementation where before they send it off to a cloud provider, they have a little system like a GPT 3.5. And the only task of this system is take the human language prompt and reformulate it in a set of much simpler queries that are much better machine readable by the LLMs. Now, you know that you can do this to a certain extent only because we have the complete theorem of chaos theory. We have the complexity theory that tells us you can only do this to a certain extent. And of course, if you are into mathematics, you know Gödel's incompleteness. So this system here also might fail. And yes, it fails here also on my particular prompt. But of course, what I thought you would then say maybe, okay, so what we have, I have a prompt by the user, this is our user prompt. And then I have, since the system is not able to do it on its own, inherently the system is unable to come up with a solution, I have to provide some help for the LLM to succeed. How I do this? I, as a simple user, I cannot go and change Gemini Pro. I cannot start to align it or to fine tune it. So what I have, I have a system prompt. And I had the idea, maybe some of you would go here and say, okay, I have to optimize the system prompt so that the user prompt and exactly the prompt that I have shown you in the video, and then we have success. So how to configure the system prompt? And I have here a set of videos here where I showed you we have a methodology with DSPI, with RAG or with Graph or whatever combination you want to have, that DSPI gives you here, after running, running and running multiple trials here, optimized system prompt and the system prompt is able to solve this query my prompt exactly my prompt with no other alteration and all the systems succeed now i took care that this is not happening that easy because running some dspy myself i found that I was not going with the second child or the third child, but I choose a configuration that was out of scope of DSPy because in the videos I showed you how DSPy works. And if you understand this, you know the limitations of the system. And therefore I decided to go with the seventh child because the seventh child is out of scope for DSPy and the seventh child example is not given, I hoped, neither in GPT-4 Omni, nor in Gemini Pro, nor in any other system. So one subscriber asked me, what is the reason that you ask for the seventh child? Well, I just had to make sure that the system, understanding how it works, is not able to come to a simple solution. Now, some of you might ask, hey, you showed us that there's a new methodology tax grad by Stanford University that is better than DSPI, the next step of the evolution of this programming here of prompt engineering. And yes, I leave it to you if you want to experience if TaxGrad works here on my particular example. However, I had also three other ideas. I thought maybe here the community would go for a probability solution. You know, you just tell the system, hey, generate 10 different explanations for why some, some event happens, and then just choose the most plausible one. Or you have 10 runs, and you see four runs come to the same conclusion. 
then you go with the highest probability. You do go with the answer that four times the run showed you an identical solution. Or I thought maybe you follow instruction tuning. So we could include here a variety of causal reasoning tasks, a few shot example where you identify causes and effect in the text, explaining here in this demonstration example here the relationship between the variables and making your prediction based on those logical causes, giving here exactly the, the idea of instruction tuning. And this would enable here you to come here to a system prompt that would enable all the models to succeed on my user prompt. And of course, the third was about temporal reasoning. Describe the timeline of the events leading up to a particular event or a particular solution and show me how each event contributes to the outcome and go step by step and go here in a linear temporal sequence. Maybe have some feedback, maybe have some self-reflection, maybe do yourself criticize, whatever. And I, I don't want to say I designed the prompt, but I give a little bit of thought why I wrote the prompt in that way. Now, what this shows me that I have to become better in explaining what I do and why I've chosen some particular things in my videos. So I'll try to do better. Therefore, in my next video, I will build now on this video and I will show you three frameworks, three complete defined methodologies to help our proprietary LLMs here with the reasoning process if they are not able to reason just given here my user prompt. So I'll go through three frameworks plus there's now some brand new research that I want to show you. There's a new reasoning structures for some days now available in the research community that all the LLMs now succeed. And maybe if you want, <laughs> I'm not sure yet, we can develop here a hybrid model, also integrating here the knowledge where I showed you that we now have generative graph models and what I showed you here about here this multitask, multi-domain, multi-modality Apple framework that is really here a machine learning paradigm shift and how we can use this insight here from the latest video to build a hybrid system that goes even beyond here the classical frameworks that we use. Okay, so I hope this clarified now a lot of your questions. And coming back here to the original title, When AI Fails, I noticed for myself it is a unique opportunity so that I can learn. I learn from your comments. I learn from your questions. I see what I have to improve to become here maybe a better explainer, but also provide you here with better, more efficient tools. And I'm looking forward to the new video. I'm looking forward to your questions, to your contribution, and it would be great to see you in my next video.